Good day, super friends. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to continue on with our look at the Kenner Total Justice Action Figure line from 1996. Last time, we looked at Wave 1, which consisted of six figures. Today, we're looking at Wave 2 that only has four. So hopefully, the video should take a little bit less time. Sorry about that. Superman, Batman, Hawkman, and Despero. We're going to open them all up today. Before we open them up, we're going to take note that the front of the cards for all these figures is exactly the same, having John Bogdanov's artwork, the Kenner Total Justice logo above that, and then each one comes in a blister bubble so that you can see their no-nonsense facial features and muscles. <laughs> And exactly the same as Series 1, the backs of the cards are all the same in the sense that they show all of the previous figures released and also have an individual bio and an image of the figure that's in the package as well as the instructions on how to use their power action feature or their weapons. Three of the figures were purchased for $5.99 from Kmart and the last one, Superman, was purchased for $7.99 at KB Toys. You know, I gotta say, this just never gets old. The act of breaking the seal of a blister card action figure that hasn't seen the light of day or tasted the outside air since it was packaged many moons ago. Well, well they, don't, they don't see anything or taste anything, but you know, the, the, oh, I planned on saying something so much cooler here. Anyhow, Despero, Batman, Superman, and Hawkman all out of their blister bubble packaging. What a stunning, fantastic, swell bunch of chaps they look like indeed. Let's look at each one individually now. First, let's look at Superman with Kryptonite Ray Emitter. Superman with his wide stance and overly exaggerated muscles just like the rest of the figures in this series is actually in a little bit more of a neutral stance in comparison to some of the other figures in this whole series. Superman's S, although painted on pretty neat, is missing that little tiny triangle on the top there. The rest of the paint deco for his belt and everywhere else is tidy enough. There really wasn't much to do aside from paint his belt, trunks, and boots and S. Superman's big red cape is made out of like a hard rubberish plastic and just clamps over his shoulders. The S on the back has been sculpted on there and not just painted, so that's kind of fun. You can clearly see that the trend had been to get away from cloth goods capes by this point. Superman's face sculpt is all chiseled and the chin sticks out all masculine and manly square jawed like. Of course he's got that mullet that he had in the 90s because, you know, the 90s was all about party in the back and business in the front. If I'm being honest, this actually kind of reminds me of John Bogdanov's artwork. Looking closer at Superman's accessories, you've got his kryptonite ray emitter. This actually kind of reminds me of the Kenner Real Ghostbusters series because how you make the kryptonite ray emitter move is you turn the thing on the back of it just like the Real Ghostbusters proton packs. The shieldy thing that he wears on his chest, he can actually kind of play peekaboo behind it. They can be open or they can be closed. Overall, I think this is one of my favorite figures in the whole series. One, because it's Superman and two, I like the more neutral stance that he has in comparison to a lot of the other characters, and I think that he's pretty well done. Also, here are some prototype shots of the Superman figure, just for funsies before we get on to the next one. Next, and here we have Batman with optical shoulder cannon. If I'm being completely honest, this is not one of my favorite figures in the series. Like, I know that they put Batman in wave two because it's technically Batman total justice, and Batman sells everything. And it's not that it's a bad figure, I'm just generally not that interested in very many variants. But what they have done looks neat enough for what it is, I suppose. The big bat decal stamped on his chest is done tidy enough. Silver bits of fractal gear all over his body. The kind of sucky thing about this Batman figure though is if you don't want his face covered up by fractal gear, then you gotta take his cape off. And Batman's head sculpt, which is actually completely different than the one they used in Wave 1, is actually not bad for what it is either. It'd be cooler if it was attached to a regular body. Batman's cannon goes on the shoulder of his cape, there's a little hole there, and he can also just hold it in his hand. Like I said, not one of my favorite figures, but because I'm a completionist, I got it. And next we have Despero with Galactic Body Blow Attack. He comes with a big old blaster and also a rapier. Here's a look at Despero from toe to head. He's definitely one of the biggest figures in the series along with Darkseid. Very girthy. And he's sporting his classic 1990s look. Funny. I've always thought that Despero kind of looks like Image's Savage Dragon, only purple. Like Barney meets the Savage Dragon. <laughs> now, although this is the first action figure of Despero ever to have this look, there was one to come after. DC Universe Classics. Only this one's got a power action punch. You just grab his arm and you, you pull it back and you let it go and it, it punches. It, uh... Yeah, it doesn't look like he's punching though. It looks more like he's holding a beer. Or a severed head by the hair. And speaking of heads, here's what Despero's noggin looks like close up. Look, he's got a fin mohawk. He is so punk. 
As we can see, he looks ticked off, angry even. Now as for those accessories, the sword's got a little peg sticking out of the side, you could just stick it in a hole in his leg, and the same thing for his back, there's a hole in his back and you just stick the gun in it, boom, voila. I gotta admit, when I was 16 years old, I didn't really know much about Despero, and it's only been since I was 16 years old that I learned more about him. And for our fourth and final figure, we're looking at Hawkman, with massive grip talons. <laughs> Who in 1996 was naming this stuff? This is the 90s version of Hawkman, and just like Mullet Superman, Broken Back Batman, White Lenses Flash, Broody Hook Hand Aquaman, and Crazy Murderous Parallax Hal Jordan, Hawkman had been redesigned yet again to look cooler for this generation. Look, you could tell it was the 90s because he had long hair. Didn't everyone have long hair in the 90s? Yep, this ain't your daddy's Hawkman. This is the long-haired, heavy metal, grunge rock version of Katar Hall. All 90s, baby. This Hawkman has nipples and has the big red and black birdie head symbol on his chest. You know, the one that the Thundercats ripped off. I kid, I kid. And look, he's got ninja stars on his arms. Ninja stars. His wings are pretty cool too. They're nice and big and bird-like. How they attach to his back is by these little hinges. They could be all flappy and stuff. Here's a closer look at that beak nose, wing-eared head sculpt up close. I really like this face sculpt. I think out of all the face sculpts, this is definitely one of my favorites. He's actually one of my favorite figures in the whole series too. Now about those massive grip talons. They're probably the most ornate of all the accessories to come with the Kenner Total Justice action figures. They look kind of like something that would be Egyptian if people from Egypt had like really cool, awesome, futuristic technology. You just pinch the little spring loaded claw things and they, well, you can see what they do. You just clip him onto Hawkman's chest and then he's ready to bash people off the ground. And yeah, that's all of them. That's all four. We've looked at all four of them. I do have a whole box of stuff. Hasbro JLA, more Kenner Man of Steel stuff, but this is the last of my Total Justice stuff that was mint on card. I've had a lot of fun looking at these figures and going on some kind of trip down memory lane back to the 1990s when DC Comics was going through all kinds of crazy changes and just chucking things to the wall and seeing what'll stick. And they really are one of the only depictions of the DC Comics 90s characters in action figure form. I've really enjoyed making this series. I hope that you've enjoyed watching it. Please be on the lookout for some Hasbro JLA stuff and more Kenner Man of Steel stuff to come. But this brings my Kenner Total Justice action figure series to a close. Super friends, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed this series, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave any and all comments you have as usual down in the comment section below. And if you're new here and you think you'd like to see more of my face and hands show up in your inbox, then I personally invite you to become a super friend today and join the DC squad. How do I become a super friend, you might ask? Well, that's simple. Just hit the red subscribe button and then ding the bell so that you get notified of when I put out new videos, if it so pleases you. And I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day, super friends. Take care.